Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brother Bosco, can you help me with a little song? With a little bit higher. Hallelujah. That's perfect. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We bless you. We honor you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for your presence. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you, Lord God, for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. There is no one like you. There is none before you. I pray that you be exalted. I pray that you be lifted up high. In Jesus' mighty name, the name of Yeshua, we pray and we believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Give honor to God. I thank God for his mercy. I thank God for his grace. I thank God for his spirit truly. I thank God for his guidance. Hallelujah. He is a good father. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when you are walking from the left hand to the right hand, you will hear a voice behind you telling you, this is the way to walk in. Walk in. So I thank God for his voice. Hallelujah. I thank you for his precious spirit. Before I just begin with critique the word for today, um, I'd like to just give honor where honor is due. I give honor to our apostle and his precious wife. Hallelujah. Thank God for just the work that the Father has begun in the lives and the outpouring that's taking place on our lives also. The title for today's word is Until the Spirit Be Poured Upon Us. Until the Spirit be poured upon us. And this was powerful because when we was up here on Friday night praying, we was praying, we was praying, I was like, Lord, what, what will I speak about? And the Lord just gave me until the Spirit be poured upon us. And when I went home, I began to study some scriptures to match upon what I was reading. Yesterday, me and Minister T went to the mall, Galleria, to evangelize at 6 p.m., yeah. At 6 p.m., we went to the mall. We prayed, we prayed, we prayed in the car for a little bit, and then we went out. And I remember we met this lady. It was so powerful. We met this lady. She had two daughters, and they was ready to go, Sister Lisa. And um, Minister T just approached them, and I was just behind them, following them, and they're like, ma'am, can we speak to you about Jesus? Do you love the Lord, and, you know? She went on and started to say, yeah, I love Jesus. I love him so much. And we begin to speak. We begin to speak. And we begin to pray in the mall with her two daughters. We held hands and we all begin to pray in the spirit. And it was so powerful because Minister Sam, when we finished praying and everything, she told us actually that she was about to leave. But she said that when we came, she smelled an aroma that kept her waiting. We was in the food court, but there was a presence that we carried that was able to capture her heart to cause her to be able to stay. She was ready to leave, but she was under a compelling power. Oh my God. You see, until the spirit of God is poured upon you, there will be times where you will try to evangelize to people. There will be times where you will try to do the will of God, but the Bible says it is God who is at work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So unless the spirit has been poured upon you, many things that you try to do that are spiritual, you will find yourself failing. And you will find yourself in confusion and be like, God, if you are so real, how come I'm not seeing your glory? She told us that she was compelled. She could not leave. Because she was under a compelling power. Now I understood what it means. That when our prayers go up to heaven. It goes up as incense. And when the father is pleased about it. We actually now begin to carry the presence of God. And the presence of God now becomes your atmosphere. It becomes an aroma that you go everywhere with. Because we were walking around and just praying in the spirit. So the title is until the spirit be poured upon us. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 2 and verse number 17, you don't have to turn there. The Bible says that in the last days, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. His sons and his daughters will prophesy. His young men will see visions and the old men will dream dreams. 
This is so powerful because when the Spirit of God dropped upon the apostles in the book of Acts chapter 2, there were people who were amazed about what took place, Sister Nisa. And other people were in doubt. Other people were saying, Minister Sam, what does this mean? And there was other people who were mocking them, Jeffrey. And they were saying that these men are drunk. But Peter stood up and he says, men and brethren, these men are drunk, but not as you think. They're not drunk with wine, but they were filled with something else. And Peter began to give them spiritual education about what was actually taking place. Because without revelation of the outpouring of the Spirit of God, people will always miss the move of God. People will never be able to understand the move of God. And they will make it a work of the flesh instead of the work of the Spirit. Some people could have said, Sister Antone, oh, this is only for the Jews. And the apostles and the believers at that time, they only believed that God only came for the Jews. But he did not know, they did not know that the Father actually came for the whole world. Because the Lord himself said, once the Spirit of God comes upon you, you shall receive power. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. What the apostles thought in Israel was that even if they would go to a place called Egypt, they would only look for Jews. They will only look for those who have been called by God, those who have been chosen by God. Not knowing that there is also a people whom the Father is calling forth. And they won't arise unless there is an outpouring. So every time the move of God is taking place, there has to be an outpouring. And it is only men who are aligned in the spirit, men who are hungry and thirsting after his presence, are able to receive the outpouring, Brother Jeffrey. There is no difference that's going to take place in your family unless you receive the outpouring. The Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1 and verse number 1, you don't have to turn there. The Bible tells us that Ezekiel was 30 years old and he was five years in captivity in the land of the Chaldeans. And the Bible says that he was among the captives by the river Kaba. And he saw visions of God and the hand of the Lord came expressly upon him. This is powerful, Sister Nisa, because he was in slavery. They were slaves. God gave them up, but yet, every day, the river Kaba was displaced in the land of the Chaldeans where the children of Israel, those who still remember the Father, they came and they prayed to seek the face of God. They waited to hear the voice of God. There was slavery, yet we have jobs, but yet we find excuses. But these were slaves, but yet any moment that they had, they all gathered together, those who still feared God, and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that the hand of God came upon Ezekiel. And he began to see the visions of God. Until the spirit be poured upon us. I believe this is so prophetic because what we'll be getting in touch will be everything that's been dealing with our church and even more. This is more than just our local gathering. This is something that the Father is doing in lives, in families, and in territories. Let's go to Luke. Chapter 4 and verse number 16 through 17. Luke chapter 4, verse number 14. Luke chapter 4, verse 16 through 17. Sister, hallelujah. Nisa, when you're there, you can take your time. When you're there, can you please read verse number 16 and 17, please? It says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as was his custom, he went to the synagogue, and on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. Hallelujah. That is that is perfect. That is perfect. Can I get um Sister Jaden to read verse number 18? Hallelujah. Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Minister Sam, can I have you read verse number 19 and 20, please? Peter said, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, verse 20. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. Verse number 21 and 22, hallelujah. Minister T, can you read that one loud for me? Luke chapter 4, verse number 21 and 22. Hallelujah. Luke 21 and 22. Luke chapter 4, verse 21 to 22. 21. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. 22. And all bear him witness and wonder at the gracious word. Which proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, Is not this Joseph's son? Hallelujah. So now let us break this down. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse number 16 through 17. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as he was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. This here is so powerful because in the Jewish custom, people will come on the Sabbath day and they will call upon you to read. And you will come up and they will give you a scroll. And you have to read and now give interpretation of what you just read. This is just like his word Wednesday. But now... You don't come with something that you studied at home. You come to the church and now they give you something and say, explain this. What does this mean to you? What revelation is God speaking about this particular thing? And this is so amazing because church is supposed to be a place where it is a confirmation of the walk that you have with God personally. And this is very prophetic because they gave him the scroll of Isaiah, but then he opened it to a specific place. And let me read verse number 18. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has saved me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. This is powerful because Christ was able to find himself in the scripture. He was given the word and he found himself. He looked and he said, I'm going to read here. And he said that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. It is amazing because this was his custom. At age 12, he was already going to the synagogues. But yet this time when he entered, when the spirit of God was upon him, because if you read the book of Luke chapter 4, this is when Jesus is tempted by the enemy. And after he left the temptation, the Bible said that he left with the power of the Spirit. So once he left with the power of the Spirit, he went back into the synagogues as his custom. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will continue doing that which you do naturally. But now you begin to see a supernatural change. He now opened the book and began to give them revelation and begin to tell them the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This means that when the spirit comes upon you, there is a mandate on the spirit of God. The anointing of God over your life comes with a mandate. And it is specific to what God has called you to do. So if you don't understand the mandate of the spirit of God on your life, you'll be doing trial and error. You'll be trying to do what other people are doing, but yet you have never found your lane. The Bible says that my horn shall you exalt as the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. This means that you have to find your horn in Christ. The place where God has given you authority. If it is to sing and bring melodies unto God, then you have to sing like your life depends on it. If the Father has anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor, 
then this means that you've got to have a heart for the people of God. So he said, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The poor are those people who have been bankrupt of true spiritual goodness. These are people who depend on God. People who have no hope. So Christ came as a person to give hope unto other people. The brokenhearted are people who have been weakened, crushed, or destroyed in spirit. If your heart has been broken, it's going to be hard for you to communicate with the Father. Because out of the heart flows the issues of life. But once the Spirit of God comes upon you, the overflow of your life will now begin to enter into other people's life. The Bible said he anointed him to preach the gospel to the captives. I don't know about you guys, but there's so many people who are enslaved to sin. People are slaves to the elements of this world. Don't you know that there's people who only live for their jobs and think that God has only created me to do this job. And they praise God for it. But you're not understanding that the job is just a platform for his glory. But unless the spirit of God comes upon you, you will think that your life just consists of being married and having children and going on vacation and taking pictures on Instagram and posting like this. And thinking that that is all that matters in your life. Not knowing that everything that you do is supposed to be for his glory. But unless that still comes upon your life, your eyes won't begin to open. Your ears won't begin to see. You see, God is calling his people to a higher place. But before you receive the outpouring, there has to be a breaking that's got to take place in you. You've got to give room for the Father. Jesus told his disciples, I have yet many things to tell you, but you cannot bear them right now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth and show you those things which are spoken unto you. So this means that how much you are able to carry only depends on your capacity. So the question I have for you, how much can you carry? What does your capacity, your tempo, how much is it able to bear? Because the Bible says that, that the heavens is his throne. He created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says that, where is the place of my rest? God is looking for rest. And this rest is not in a physical building, but it is in you. Because the Bible says that God does not dwell in temples made by human hands. So the Father is looking for rest. He's looking for where the outpouring can come. But he needs a vessel. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord God that was upon Christ anointed him to preach or to open up the blind eyes. What you see and how you see in the kingdom of God matters. One person can see a beautiful lady on the sidewalk and holler at her. Another person can see her and pick up her burden and begin to cry. Because what they see is different. And how they see it is different. One person could be persecuted and begin to fight back and begin to say, why am I being persecuted? Why am I being picked on? Why is there so much pressure upon me? But another person understands that the more responsibilities you have, that means that you've been upgraded in the kingdom. Another person understands that blessed are those who are persecuted for his name's sake. Because what you see and how you see it matters. So if your eyes have not been opened, you begin to look at your assignment and pass your assignment. Because you not even realize, this is actually the person whom God has called me to. But because you cannot see you just see them as somebody who's got their pants down, somebody who's cussing, who's gang banging, somebody who's looking after women, yet not knowing that God has called you to that person. But because your eyes are blind, you cannot see. Luke chapter 4, verse number 19 to 22. The Bible says, Hallelujah. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. 
and the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Verse 22, And all bear witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Isn't this the son of Joseph? Jesus said, This day, this scripture is fulfilled. Unless the Spirit of God comes upon you, unless there's an outpouring, what was written concerning you in the volume of the books will never be fulfilled. You can leave as a believer, but when you come to the Father, He's going to say, I gave you a mandate. I gave you an assignment. You was not able to ascend. When I was giving out my outpouring, you was not ready to receive because you were too full of yourself. You was worried about me and how much I can receive, how much I can gain, and how much people can see me, so how much I can shine, yet not knowing that you must decrease, that he may increase. So the Bible says that this day, this scripture has been fulfilled. I'm here to ask you, how many scriptures have been fulfilled upon your life? How many people are able to testify that this day I truly experience the love of God? I experienced the power of God. Why? Because a man entered into my life. You have to understand that you are a living epistle. Read by all men. And if men look at you, and if they don't see the scriptures be fulfilled in your life, then something has not come upon you. Let's go to the book of Judges chapter 6 and verse number 12. Judges chapter 6 and verse number 12. When you're there, you can say, Amen, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister Gio, I'm going to have you read it, but can you give me just a little bit more sound? Hallelujah. Help me ascend. Judges chapter 6 and verse number 12. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 6 and 12 says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, mighty man, and fearless courage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Antone, when you are there, can I have you please read Judges chapter 6 and verse number 13. Judges 6 12, The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. Lord is with you, my glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, before the angel of the Lord actually came unto Gideon, let me give you guys a quick rundown. So the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And God gave them over to the Midianites. And the children of Israel were actually hiding in dens and caves in the mountains. Because when they will begin to sow their crops, the Midianites will come and begin to receive what they have sowed. And they were under so much oppression. They were under so much scrutiny. And it came to pass that the children of Israel began to cry and to call upon the name of the Lord. And the Spirit of God began to move. And God now was looking for a man. So the Father sent his angel to Gideon. So this is where we are. The Bible says in verse number 12, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Verse number 13. Minister Sam, can I have you read verse number 13? Um, yeah, verse number 13. It says, Gideon said to me, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where, and where are all the miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, did, did not the Lord bring us up, bring us up from completion? But not the Lord has forsaken us and, and delivered us into the hands of the human Hallelujah. Sister Sanjuria, can I have you read verse number 14, please? Hallelujah. That's perfect. Verse 14. I will make 
Oh my God. Verse number 13, there are a couple of words I want us to pay attention to, and you can underline if you have a pencil or a pen with you. The Bible says, And Gideon said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, underline why. Why then is all this befallen us? And where, underline where, where be all of his miracles which our father sold us? Saying, did not, underline did not, the Lord bring us up from the land of Egypt, but now the Lord has forsaken us, underline forsaken, and delivered us unto the hand of the Midianites. Words like why, where, did not, and forsaken, we continue to be upon your mouth unless the Spirit of the Lord has come upon you. Yes, sir. Unless there's an outpouring upon your life, you will continue to make excuses and say, Father, did you not say in your word that if I hunger and thirst after your righteousness, I shall be filled? Why have I not seen what I'm seeking after? But yet you don't know that there is a season for sowing and a season for reaping. You're just in your sowing season. And it might be longer than others because what God is trying to bring forth in you is something greater than somebody else is carrying at that moment. So in so many times you're like, God, why? Where are you? Did you not say this? Why have you forsaken us? But you continue to say that concerning your family, concerning where God has placed you at until there's an outpouring, until the spirit be poured upon us. Men will continue to make excuses. Men will continue to look to men for help. You continue to look at your natural resources as a means that something can help you. You put your strength in yourself. You put your strength on how much money you can receive. You put your strength on how you look and how you dress and what people say about you, yet not knowing that until the Spirit be poured upon us, people will always ask for questions where there won't be no answers. So Gideon was asking questions and he was saying, Father, where are the answers? You're giving me the conclusion, but how would these things be? Let's read verse number 15 and 16. Hallelujah. Sister Sama, can I have you read verse number 15? Man Manessa. Manessa, and I am the best in my family. Oh my God. Verse number 16, Brother Bosco. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 16 says, The descendants of Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 6, verse number 16. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Oh my God. This is so powerful, Brother Jeffrey, because you will continue to doubt your calling. You will continue to doubt the work that God is actually going to do in your life until the Spirit of the Lord God be poured upon you. He was saying, I am the least in my father's house. You begin to look at your limitation. Some of you must say, I'm just a woman. Women are not supposed to preach in church. But if the spirit of the Lord God is going to come upon you, your gift will make room for you. They won't have to tell you. They don't have to look at you and be like, this is a woman. She's this color. She's that color. She's from this place. It's not about where you're from. It's not about who gave birth to you. It's about what the Father is giving birth to you. Because until the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you, there always will be excuses. But you don't know that your natural limitations are actually the reason why God is going to use you. Yes, sir. This is the reason why God is going to show forth his glory in your life. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4 that when the high priest, when they saw the disciples, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they saw them and they perceived that these were common men. 
This does not look like people who went to church. They were just fishermen. People who smell like fish. They didn't even smell good. Tax collectors. People were just normal men. But yet they understood. When they saw them, they say, we perceive that they have been with Jesus. They were common men. But what they had upon their life was extraordinary. To the point that when they went to the gates called beautiful, there was a man who was lame, a man who could not walk. And when you continue to read the scriptures, Brother Paul, yes, this man was 40 years old. Yes, so there was people in the temple, but yet there was a man outside seeking for help. He was asking for alms, but yet they did not know that there was a greater cry within his heart. He needed to be delivered. This is why Jesus, the Spirit of God, is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. The poor are those who have not tasted and seen the goodness of God. The poor are those who are brokenhearted. Those who are in captivity. And Peter went up to the man. And he said, look upon us. He said, silver and gold I do not have. But there was something that came upon me. There was an outpouring that I received. Because Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8, when the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will receive power. And he said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. And they picked up the man and the man began to walk. This is so powerful, Sister Samar, because they actually took them to the high priest. And they wanted to put them in prison, Bastard. And they asked them, by what name or by what power do you do these things? And Peter stood up with boldness and began to say, there is a name that's been given unto men yes, for which men shall be saved. Yes, there is salvation in no other but the name of Jesus. There is no way you can say this name Jesus, but yet nothing come upon those people who are around you. You see, until the Spirit of God comes upon you, you will think that you are shy and you are timid. But when the Spirit comes upon you, you will actually find your shape in the Spirit. Many of you guys feel like, oh man, I cannot speak. I stutter. Minister Sam, when he came over here, he used to stutter. But when something came upon him, something heavy came upon him. A power came upon him. He speaks as he's like, oh, he speaks like a theologian. And many of you guys will come and see him now and be like, this, I want to speak like him. But before, he couldn't speak like that. But something came upon him. Something that was greater than his natural limitation. This is why God is going to use you. Your natural limitation is an advantage to see the glory of God in your life. Because the Bible said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven has come for those who seem like there is no hope, there is no help. Where now you look onto the hills, for where will come my help my come? My help will come from the Lord. And when God is about to bring his help, he will send you, Nisa. He looks for a man, he don't look for animals. Unfortunately, God had to use a donkey to tell Balaam to not go the way he's going. But God will look for a man. Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another one? Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. There will be an outpouring that's going to take place and your heart has to be ready. Because the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel that if you're not careful, all that you have will only be on your ankle, Brother Jeffrey. You are a believer, but what you carry is only on your ankle. And if you're speaking about winning souls for the kingdom of God, <laughs> another measure, Holy Ghost, another 1,000. So it comes when you begin to pray. I remember when we was in university in our college, me and Minister Sam were praying. We would pray from 10 to 12 or 1, from 10.30 to 1. And then we also pray from 3 to 4 and also wake up in the morning and pray. 
It came a time that we were praying, Sister Nisa. But we was not praying loud, Brother Vasco. And we used to pray with our sister in Christ's name, Sister Makeda. And the time came that she was in a room, but we had already started praying. When she was coming up the stairs, she heard us loud. But when she came in, Brother Jeffrey, we were just praying like this. How was our voice able to be heard in the whole campus, but yet we was not praying loud? I now understood that unless something comes upon you, you will continue to use your voice thinking that your voice will change, but it is what is coming through you. It is spirit and life. A time came that we was in the place of prayer. We was praying, oh Jesus. We was praying, Sister Nisa, we was praying. And God led me to touch Sister Makeda. And I touched her. <laughs> and she was afraid and she shook out of her seat. Almost as if she was about to fall. And we continued to pray, we continued to pray. When the prayer was over, I asked her, Makeda, what happened? Why were you so surprised and so shocked when I touched you? She said, Mom, but you don't understand. When you touched me, I did not see you, but I saw something that was bigger than this room that we were in. You see, unless something comes upon you in your life, you will continue to do things, but this is just religious. But when something comes upon you, it will be tangible. That when you come around people, they will be able to feel the presence and the glory of God. Yo, I'm building my case. Let's go to the book of Luke chapter 1, verse number 30. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 1, verse number 30. And brother Paul, I'm going to have you read it. When you're ready, read verse number 30 for me when you're ready. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 30. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You are found favor with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Jeffrey, can I have you read verse number 31? And the one says, You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to. Oh, Jesus. oh my God, oh my God. Sister Beza, can I have you read verse number 32? Yes. Great. Hallelujah. Minister Sam, can I be read verse number 33? And you will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and over his kingdom there will be no end. Oh my God. Verse number 34, Sister Nisa. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Sister Riziki, can I have you read verse number 35? Brother John, can I have you read that same verse number 35? This is so powerful because Mary was favored by God. And so many times when God has favored you, you will have some type of fear about what the outcome will be. Will I continue in the faith? Will I continue with what God has placed in my heart for me to do? Mary was afraid. She was told that she was going to bear a son. 
and this son was going to be called Jesus is going to be great and the father was going to give him the throne of his father David. The Bible lets us know that may we ask the question that so many of us ask. How shall these things be? God, you have called me to ministry. You showed me dreams and pieces of me preaching and healing the sick, casting out devils. You've called me to do something great. I've seen it in my visions. I've had people come and prophesy to my life. But I'm here to tell you that all they knew Jesus was was a carpenter and Joseph's son until something heavy came upon his life. And I'm here to tell you that Mary asked, how should these things be? The answer is simple. The angel of the Lord said, the spirit of the Lord God will come upon you. And the power of God will overshadow you. When the spirit of God comes upon you, every question that you had about how will my life end up? How will my children be father when they begin to seek you? The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging for bread. If there is something upon you that thing, we transfer to your children and your children's children. So this will be the time for us to pray for the outpouring. So Brother Bob spoke, can you help me ascend with just humming and just melodies unto God as we begin to pray. So everybody, wherever you are, can we please stand and begin to pray for the outpouring. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to be anchored deep. I don't want to be just on my knees. And my waist is not even enough either. My shoulders is not enough either. I need another measure. I want to flow in his presence. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says this is a day of trouble, a day of rebuke and blasphemy. Because children have come to give birth, but yet there's no strength to give birth. But as soon as Zion travailed, she gave birth to her children. As soon as you begin to travail, your children is the fruit of the spirit that God is working in your life and what the Father has called you to do. But unless you travail, you will not be able to give birth. The outpouring has come to give you strength. And outpouring in our streets, oh Jesus, we come and receive your power. Blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after his righteousness, for they shall be filled. And the Spirit of God shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Wherever you are, if you need a prayer, you can just step up. If you need a prayer, if you just need to touch and agree. Some of you might feel like, Father, I have not received the outpouring in my life. I need another mention. I need to be filled until I overflow. I want to run over. Oh, Jesus. Some of you guys might feel like you only ate for this. Some of you guys might only feel like you waste or your knees deep. But if you're here, I don't know about you guys. To my ankles, to my knees, oh Jesus. So the weavers will begin to flow. God will begin to speak to you concerning what he has called you to do. Just begin to pray before coming to the queen. That the Father may give you another measure. Tell him that I cannot continue to live like this. You've called me into education. It is more than algebra. It is more than aquatic science. It is more than art. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. You've called me as a deliverer. 
Oh Jesus, but the question is, how shall this thing be? Oh Jesus. 